Hello and welcome back everybody to the GDQ Hotfix. We are uh, now in a separate block here doing some, some racing games, uh, but performed by the one and only Hypnoshark, runner I've been wanting to get on here for a while. I'm, uh, I'm glad I had a slot that worked for your time zone and we're able to make this happen. Uh, Hypno is going to be doing two different runs today. One is going to be Crash Team Racing 101%, and then uh, we'll be followed up by... Um, or I forgot the name. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, that's what it was. 48 tracks, 200cc, uh, basically a bunch of the DLC tracks. Not all of them, because I think it's like 90, right? Something like that. Um, yeah, there's 90. So this is, this will be 48 tracks, a modest amount of tracks, but still plenty of racing goodness. Super excited for this. Um, Hypno, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and get us into the run? Yeah, so again, thanks for having me. I've been really, really looking forward to doing this since I found out that I was doing this. Um, it's not often you get to showcase a game like Crash Team Racing, but especially with 101%, a category that has it all, really. Um, it's quite rare that I get to showcase this in front of so many people just because usually I'll be doing the any percent category. Um, but yeah, it's a real honor to do this. And again, shout out to Etchy for making it happen. So, But uh, yeah, um, the first 17 minutes or so, I'll just be going through basic tech and like driving. And then things are really, really going to start happening. Uh, if you want glitches, you got glitches, is all I'm going to say. <laughs> um, so yeah, all right, I'll give you guys a countdown. Okay. Before the run even starts, note that I'm saving my game in the bottom right save file. That's, believe it or not, going to be important. Um, all right, countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, let's get after it. So, this is Crash Team Racing for the PS1. I'll be playing it on a PlayStation 2 because of fast disk speed, which speeds up all the loading times of PS1 games, which is, of course, quite useful for speedruns. Welcome to the adventure. And immediately, we will be going into Crash Cove, the first level in the game. It's a nice, like, warm-up level to get us started. There's only one shortcut, which you'll see pretty much immediately, but it's going to involve jumping and Jumping is going to be a very, very important part of this game because as you see here, I jump and slide and that is going to be very, very important. Drifting in this game is the main speed tech and out of your drift, you can mini turbo. If you take a look at the bottom right side of the screen, there's a mini turbo like bar, I guess you could call it. And every time that fills up, I can hit L1 and get a little boost. And what this boost allows me to do is obviously not only go fast, but it increases something called reserves. And what reserves are is basically the way I've always described reserves is it's the right that you have to keep the speed that you currently have. So every time I boost, I'm increasing the amount of seconds that I will keep this speed for. And as you can see off this turbo pad, this green and black thing on the, on the ground, the aim is to not hit any walls and keep the speed going for the entire race. And so far, so good in that department. Um, and that's the shortcut I was talking about, by the way, that little jump up there. But yeah, the, the main speed tech in this game is going to be drifting and boosting and keeping our reserves through drifting and boosting. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty nice way to start off the run, very cozy level. There's not much that can go wrong outside of a shortcut. Um, so yeah, that's nice. It's a good way to start. Um, so here Uka Uka he is a magical mask who gives us hints. Something important about this guy, every time he appears, obviously it's slow and we don't want him to appear that often, but he will guaranteed appear eight times. But, because this is 101% and we'll be entering multiple levels multiple times, he might appear a few other times to explain to us different game modes that we're going to do in this category. Um, so he will be appearing quite a bit, um, especially through the first part of the game, but then hopefully we won't see him for a while. Second level is called Ruse Tubes. Um, this level has the second main speed tech, which is Speed Ghosting or SGing which I will go into in detail after this lab, but this is what it is. Basically, if you go out of a downhill, you can hop at the bottom of it. And what hopping does in this game, continuously hopping, I should say, 
is it allows you to maintain the momentum you currently have. So whilst boosting maintains the speed that you currently have in terms of keeping it for multiple laps, hopping maintains momentum. So like this, out of a downhill. Even though I hit that wall, that's actually a really, really good example of it. Even though I hit that wall, I was still able, ugh, that's kind of bad. And this is an example of what happens if you don't have a good speed ghost going really, really slow through the off-road there. Um, but yeah, I, I'll try and really, really get a good one lap through to really show it off. Because you can see the momentum I have right now just by drifting and boosting. But right here on this downhill, you can really fly. That's not bad. Honestly, it, it can go way better than that. And even now you can see the momentum. Look how much faster that is compared to lap, uh, lap two. That's much better. But yeah, hopefully I can get like a really, really good speed ghost at some point in this run. And you'll see what I'm talking about because you can get up to like some crazy speeds with it. So yeah, again, you could, you could hit, give us a hint. What a great guy. Really trying to help us out. I don't really want to listen to him though so i'm gonna skip him because you know i'm kind of over him to be honest <laughs> all right next level mystery caves again another really really nice level to show off speed ghosting um hopefully i'm able to get a good one here see what we can do haven't been messed up by the ai yet um the ai i should mention just at the start of this level here um ai in this game in certain tracks can be very very annoying um because they can like item you and missile you and potentially get in the way of shortcuts as i'm sure you'll see later um there's a lot of stuff that can happen um but yeah hopefully that won't happen for a while if ever but i'm just prefacing it i suppose Gonna use that bomb to snipe that Wumper crate. That's actually perfect, because I should explain Wumper now. What Wumper threw is, as you see, I have 10 of them at the top of the screen right now. Every one Wumper that I get, Wumper being that little fruit um, that's not an apple or a mango or a whatever you think it is. Um, every one Wumper, I get about 0.2% speed increase. Except the 10th one. The 10th one put only makes my items better. So, for instance, instead of having a TNT, um, which is like a red box, but if you hit, um, you have time to get it off your head by jumping before it explodes, right? Instead of having one of those, I have a nitro. And uh, nitros are going to be important later on for a particular shortcut. If you know, you know. Um, I won't go into detail just yet. That's coming up in about an hour, but gonna be an important item later on but nitros immediately explode when you hit and that's their gimmick so but back onto wumper if i have nine wumper as compared to zero wumper i'll have about a 1.8 percent speed increase which may not sound like much and depending on the level it isn't worth getting especially if it's a really really short level However, in certain levels that are really, really long, and especially levels that have like speed ghosts and places where you go really, really quick, um, that 1.8% speed increase is gonna matter a lot more the faster you go. So definitely an important thing to, to keep an eye on. That being said, final track of Hub 1 already, Sewer Speedway. This is probably the hardest track in Hub 1, I would say. Sewer Speedway is... Uh, Pretty tough just because of the intended shortcut not being like the easiest thing in the world definitely is something you have to concentrate for as well as the fact that there are speed ghosts that are kind of awkward to get but this is the first level where speed ghosts are going to become really really apparent um just because i'm not going to get them off of your standard downhill i'm actually going to get them off of the wall um which especially at the end of the lap is going to look very very interesting the gimmick of this level is that it's like a half pipe um which is obviously great but at the same time the walls having downhill like momentum is going to be very very important this is the sg i'm talking about and as you can see i am absolutely flying um and i will keep on continuously hopping until about here where it, my momentum eventually runs out but that's a really really good example of a great sg um, I'll be using the term SG from now on just because saying speed ghost is a bit of a mouthful. 
But um, yeah, th this track is a really, really shining example of how important Speed Ghost can be when coupled with reserves and your your reserves being high because of all the mini turbos and boost you've been doing. So not only are you maintaining the speed that you currently have through reserves, but you're also maintaining crazy momentum from walls via uh, speed goes. It's a very fast paced level because of that. I haven't even mentioned, by the way, the barrels in this level. The barrels are on a cycle um, and the cycle starts as you enter the level, which does mean that if you get to like let's say, that last barrel there at 1.30 on the timer. It will be in the same spot every time, so we are able to memorize where those barrels will be, which is really, really useful. And because of that, I was able to avoid every single one and not get hit. First boss of the run. First boss of Darun, Ripperoo. He is a blue kangaroo. He's not a blue dog. I've heard people say he's a dog. He's not a dog. He's not a dog. Anyways, he's a blue kangaroo in a straight jacket, which begs the question, how is he driving? Is he driving with his feet? Like what? How? He's very talented. Um, the boss's gimmick is where he plants TNTs out the back of his car. You may or may not have seen it right there. Um, which would be a problem um, if we were stuck behind him or if like, you know, we weren't ahead of him, but the thing is, we're ahead of him. And because of that, boss races can tend to be like any other race. And this is where I should bring up, uh, in terms of boss races and this category. This very well might be the only boss race you see this run. Besides the final boss. It might not be, depending on how the route goes because things are going to get messy and things are going to get kind of improvised, let's say, depending on our luck or not luck. Um, but this very well could be the only boss fight you see. So it's worth mentioning that that is the boss's uh, gimmick. They place items out of the back of their car, but if you're ahead of them, they're like any other race usually. All right. That is the first world done, or it would be if this wasn't 101%. We are going to revisit some levels. We've already got all the trophies from this world, but now in 101%, we need the tokens, the relics, and the gem cups. Um, so the gem cups we will get, um, or we would get at the end if we weren't doing glitches. More on that later. Um, but we do still need to get all the tokens and all the relics. Um, the relics are especially a thing in this category because they are the only items in the game um, that you cannot get via a, um, a glitch. Um, so relics, we have to do them all the legit way, I'm afraid. Um, but that's fine because honestly, the, I, I personally believe that this category is the perfect mix of driving and glitching. So far, we've only been doing driving, but don't worry, we will get to the glitching very, very soon. Probably in the next five minutes or so. It's the first relic of the run. We do a sewer speedway um, for routing reasons. Um, the main reason in the route is because we can get the token from this level in a glitchy way, but we have to do the relic at some point. So we may as well do it now, get it over and done with early. Um, you may see in the top left, it says Sapphire 133. There are three types of relic that you can get in this game. Sapphire, gold, and platinum. Um, we will be going after gold relics. Um, sapphire gets you 100% completion. Uh, gold relics get you 101% completion, and that's what this category is, 101%. And platinums are purely for the completionists. Um, so, in this level, for example... A nice barrel, that was close. In this level, for example, Gold Relic is a 105. So we've got to get 105 or lower. Platinum, however, is 37 seconds. So if I wanted Platinum right now, I would be sweating. However, that's okay um, because we only need Gold for 101%. So luckily, we don't need to pay too much attention to that. Thank goodness. 
unfortunately. We are easily going to get 105 as long as I avoid that barrel. Please. That was coming my way. All right. One more SG here. That's a nice sewer speedway. That's nice. 56 is fine. Um, what most people do in this category is um, you can write like what the relic times are, like in your splits, for instance, um, on your timer. But I have been playing this game for far too long <laughs> and I have them all memorized. So yeah, 105 for Sewer Speedway. It'll also be 105 for the next relic we do as well, which is Ruse Tubes. However, there's a reason I brought up Uka Uka earlier. Uka Uka is going to give us a hint here. However, he has a weird thing where if you enter another level after Uka Uka has just spawned and activate him again, he spawns in really fast. Like that. Like he spawns in really, really quick. Um, that's another reason why we do Sewer Speedway Relic after Uka tells us congratulations on beating this area. And then we do Ruse Tube's token after that hint because it makes him spawn in really, really quick, twice in a row. It's a very niche thing, but it saves about six seconds. It's really, big, uh, really, really important. The tokens in this game, uh, the CTR tokens, a lot of them we are going to get via a glitch, which is coming up very soon. Um, however, this one, again, because of routing reasons involving that Uka hint, um, we get now. Uh, the idea is to get CTR, uh, the, le uh, the letters will be scattered around the level, usually in places that are hard to get, um, and you also need to come in first. So if you play Diddy Kong Racing, it's very, very similar to the, uh, the Silver Coin challenges, for instance, um, where you need to get all eight Silver Coins and finish in first. Very similar to that. Um, arguably slightly easier, but some of the letter placements... Um, are going to be quite sneaky, as you will probably see later in the run. Ruse Tube's probably one of the easiest tokens. It's very, very similar to the trophy. Um, that's a really nice SG. Oh, my goodness. That's a 22.46 lap. Uh, that's genuinely one of the best laps I've ever done. And that is not an exaggeration. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. That's crazy. Um, after the token, you get spawned outside the track that you uh, just did, so we immediately back up and do the relic. This is going to be the last level that we do before glitches start happening. So again, the gold relic is 105, sapphire is 115, but we don't really care about that. Uh, we want gold. This is actually one of the relics that's um, quite tame, so that means we might accidentally get platinum. If you get platinum, it's completely fine. Um, it's absolutely fine. But it would be funny if I accidentally got platinum. That would be quite amusing. Yeah, let's see what we got here. Go off a turbo pad. Stock up some reserves so that we don't run out of reserves when we on purposely don't boost a lot because we're just simply jumping, trying to keep our momentum. That's another thing I should talk about, by the way. The relationship between speed ghosting and reserves. Because obviously when you're when you're jumping like this out of a downhill to keep your momentum, you're not boosting, which means your reserves are constantly going down when you're doing that. So it's important to do what I'm doing now and boost a lot before a big SG so that out of the SG you still have some reserves to keep the, uh, the turbo pad speed. That's actually very, very... That's an interesting dynamic of CTR, um, for sure. And I'm sure I'm, I'm sure, excuse me, I'll go into that later. Well, that's another gold relic. And uh, yeah, now it's time to game. Um, so the first 17 minutes of the speed run, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to be real, relatively tame compared to what's about to happen. I'll try my best to explain this. So, after this Uka hint, I'm going to hit star and X on the same frame in the pause menu. Over the quit button. Like that. And enter Skull Rock, which is a crystal challenge, which is a level where you need to get 20 crystals um, in a certain amount of time to beat the level. However... 
by hitting star and X on the same frame, I store that quit menu in memory. So I can quit to the main menu instead of leaving um, the level the intended way. So I'm on the main menu and you may be wondering, you didn't save your game. How are you going to get back into your save file? You didn't save it. More on that later. <laughs> it's going too fast. Um, Crystal Challenge in Dingo Canyon. The game is now really, really confused and thinks that this racetrack is a um, is a crystal challenge. I'm going to death abuse here. Yes, this is going crazy. And now I'm going to hit this Wumper Fruit with a certain camera angle. For whatever reason, this tricks the game into giving me certain items from the game's inventory. Um, so if I did that right just then, if I did that correctly, I should get a second boss key, effectively skipping a boss fight. <laughs> By the way, it's not over. I'm in battle mode right now, and I'm hitting myself with engine. This is a separate glitch. <laughs> this is a battle mode wrong warp. This is our way of getting back into the save file we were just in. The game still remembers the last save file that you were in, no matter if you saved or not. However, you can't access it unless you wrong warp like this. For some reason, with Dingo on Team 2 and Engine on Team 4, like this, like this menu, I can hit X and it spawns me back into the save file I was currently in. I do have two keys. If you look at the top of the screen, I have two keys. That means I did it correctly and I have beaten a second boss. It's not over, by the way. Uh, now we're going to... Now we're going to go and save our game and go into Sewer Speedway Token. Um, which is a token that we haven't done yet. So you may be thinking, right, you're just going to beat the level normally, right? And like, you know, get the token and move on with your life. The game thinks, because we were just in the battle mode, the game thinks that we're still in battle mode. Which means we can quit to the main menu again. Right? Like this. But because we just saved our game, we don't need to do the wrong warp again. We can just go into our save file normally. As Naughty Dog intended. But now, you notice that we left Sewer Speedway Token the incorrect way. So now the game thinks that we still are in Sewer Speedway Token. So this is just a big chain of the game thinking we're somewhere that we're not. And it finally ends. This glitch finally ends with us going into the next trophy. However, because again, the game thinks that we're in a token, there are going to be uh, CTR letters in this level. As you can see the C over there, which I'll get on lap two. Um, and yes, uh, that means that we will get, upon beating this level, we will get the trophy and the token at the same time, effectively getting two uh, prizes for beating one race, which is unbelievably fast. When this glitch was discovered, quick history lesson, when this uh, glitch was discovered in, I think, late 2021, early 2022, around there, uh, the world record uh, went from a 251 to a 230 to a 211 in like a month. Um, now world record is a 203 and we are closing in on sub two hours so this glitch just blew everything wide open and it all started from just hitting star and x on the same frame on the pause menu that's what this started from and it just snowballed completely out of control i haven't even been talking about this level by the way luckily we are revisiting it um is this is 101%. So I'll talk more about the actual level later. Luckily, this isn't the most interesting of levels, so it's fine. But yeah. Yeah. The pretty nuts glitch. And um, if you're confused by this glitch in any way, um, don't worry, because we're about to do it again. And again. And again. We're going to do it a lot. Um... Basically, for every trophy that's left, we're going to do this glitch. However, the moment that we unlock Dingo Canyon token, which is in about 10-15 minutes or so, we can do this glitch, but even faster. 
because we won't need to go into battle mode and we can just use Dingo Canyon token that we have unlocked in Adventure. But for now, we've got to do the long-winded setup for it. So again, we're going to go back into Rampage Ruins. Because I got a boss key, and this is where the routing can get a bit finicky. Because I got a boss key last time from this glitch. This time, I'm going to go for a slightly different camera angle, which will hopefully yield us a slightly different item from the game's inventory. For the purposes of this route, I'm going to try and glitch a trophy so that we can unlock Dingo Canyon token earlier and do faster versions of this glitch sooner. This is the optimal route. The only problem is I need to get a certain camera angle that's very, very hard to get because I need to death abuse until I'm able to jump like that. Jump off of the out of bounds plane. It spawns me further back. I now start boost and hold backwards on the camera. I wait for the camera to settle. And I go, and hopefully that specific camera angle that I was on just there looking backwards gives us a trophy. It's hard, so it might not. I might have gotten unlucky, but we will see when I walk back into the um when I walk back into the game after two death abuses here. Should mention about this battle mode wrong walk. Um every time I die. The game thinks that it needs to put me in a slightly different area. So doing two death abuses like this, um, doing two death abuses like this, warps us into the main hub world of the save file we were most recently in, which is of course the one we're using to speedrun, which is great. Say I have six trophies, not five, please. Unlucky. So, right, what happened there was I didn't get what I wanted. Unlucky. Um, so, probably what happened was I was barely off with my camera angle. Like, barely. And the game probably gave me something that's not relevant to adventure mode. Maybe it unlocked me something to do with time trials. It may have even unlocked me a character. Because that can happen, by the way. This glitch is nuts. Uh, yeah, like, bears repeating. This glitch is absolutely insane. Um, if you're wondering why we went back into Cocoa Park Token, by the way, uh, we're going to use this like we used Sewer Speedway earlier. We're just going to leave and then go back in, trick the game into thinking we're in a token. And then we're going to do Tiger Temple, which is the next level that you would usually do casually, but except for this time, Obviously, we're going to get the CTR letters as well, and we're going to get both the trophy and the token at the same time. So that is what this entire route, especially like the first part of the route, is structured around. Um, that is what the first, I would say, hour and 20, hour and 25 minutes is structured around. And don't worry, it, it's not like this speedrun is just this glitch. There are so many shortcuts in this game. In fact, the next level has a nut shortcut um, that I'll go into when we get there um, in about five, six minutes or so. But there are still crazy shortcuts that have everything to do with driving. But what this category introduces is nuts glitches as well. Um, and again, after this world, after we unlock all the tracks in this world, we're going to be able to do this glitch a lot quicker as well, which is obviously fantastic. This track here, uh, speaking of shortcuts, this track here has a shortcut that is dependent on RNG. I need an item that I can throw forward to break down this wall right here. Like that. Which is very important because one of the letters is in that shortcut. So that's very, very uh, required that I, I get an item that I can throw forward at some stage. Pretty bad RNG so far, honestly. I'm getting nitros, which I cannot throw forward. Um, ideally, I want a potion, a bomb, or a shield here. Okay, I got a potion. Very nice. Two out of three RNG is fine. Take it. Able to do the shortcut twice. Very good. Very, very good. But yeah, I, I hope to goodness, but I have not lost any of you. I'm sure I have lost some of you, though. Because I'm kind of losing myself with how this glitches. Um, but, you know, such is the way of the world. Congratulations. Aha. So what I just did there 
that little pause. That's actually a one frame trick. I'll go more into that the further into the run I get. But every time I win an item like a trophy or a relic, Uka Uka will say, congratulations, you win a trophy, relic, whatever I won. Um, but if I hit start on the right frame, the game actually allows me to pause. And then when I unpause the game, it will skip the dialogue. Saves about two to three seconds. That is a much bigger deal in any percent, just because the category is a lot more refined and seconds mean a lot more than minutes in that category. Um, whereas here, this glitch kind of trumps a lot of time save. So because I didn't get a trophy last time because I was unlucky, I will go for a boss key again. So I will hold backwards, I will hold break and hold X and mash circle. And hopefully, that gave us a key. Again, if it doesn't, or if it does, it will affect how we play the rest of the route. Um, this route is very, very uh, improvised. Um, it's very, very like dependent on how these glitches go. Uh, this is the second to last time we'll be entering battle mode, hopefully, given the route that we're doing. We can hope. Um, once we unlock Dingo Canyon token, we won't need to do this, which is nice fortunate hopefully um when i walk back into adventure mode i will have uh three keys not two um that's the hope we'll see if we do nice so as you can see at the top of the screen i have three keys now which is very, very nice. It's interesting that I didn't get the trophy set up, but I got both key setups. That's that's hilarious. <laughs> that's really funny. I think, judging by the mini map, um, if you have a look at the mini map, um, a lot of the dots are yellow. Uh, does that mean I got this world's boss? Time will tell. Basically, if I got this world's boss key, I don't have to watch the boss cutscene. Like how Ripperoo came in and gave me a big talk about how he was going to destroy me and then lost in embarrassing fashion. Hopefully, if I got this world's boss key, I won't have to watch that cutscene, which would save me about roughly 30 seconds, I would say, which would be really, really nice. All right, next level. Papu's Pyramid. Okay. In any percent, no major glitches, the main category for this game, this track has one of the defining shortcuts. Um, in this category, it's not as defining, but it's still unbelievably important. We're going to try and get a mask. Is the, here we go. Because a mask is like a star power up in this game. And we're going to go off this wall and try and land in a very particular zone. I actually did it at GDQ. Okay, do it again. <laughs> I nearly did it twice in a row. Okay, so that is called Batiziano. And that is a shortcut that, um, let's just put it this way. Um, I'm the only person that goes for it. And that's like, not like a brag. That's actually an anti-brag because I'm the only person dumb enough to think that it's a good idea to go for. Uh... <laughs> It's an anti-brag. Um, I'm dumb for going for it, but it worked. So we'll take it. Um, basically, I need to land in a very particular area of the track. And that requires a mask and a lot of momentum. And whilst the game is trying to push you off of this wall, because fun fact, you are not... earlier I said that the AI hopefully won't do anything stupid yeah so about that um, the AI might have done something stupid um, but that's okay um, that wall that I was on to do that shortcut um, tries to shove you off of it um, as much as it can because it realizes nice but you're not supposed to be up there and so that's why that shortcut is really hard, because that terrain on that wall isn't what it's supposed to be. Like, because the game doesn't expect you to be up there. 
So it's really, really hard to make that with that much momentum, but I'm stunned that I even got single Tizzy. That's that's really, really cool. The reason it's called Tiziano, by the way, is because the guy who found the tech, the, the shortcut, the whatever you want to call it, uh, his tag is Tiziano. Shout outs to Tiziano. And um, yeah, that's the reason it's called that. Uh, we would just call it Papu's Pyramid Shortcut, but as you'll see when we do the relic of that track, um, there are so many shortcuts in that level that calling it Papu's Pyramid Shortcut would get confusing. Here I'm going to go for a slightly different camera angle. I'm just going to drive into the Wumper, let the camera settle and then hold back. The idea of that setup is to hopefully get us um, a token from the first hub world that we've already done. So we already did Ruse Tube's token, as you saw. We did that level, we collected the CTR letters, it was great. We haven't done Crash Cove, Mystery Caves or Sewer Speedway token, and the idea of what I just did is hopefully we get one of those uh, via this glitch. That's why we left all of them behind, because we were planning on getting them now. Um, we also do have to do some relics, but we will do those at the end of the run. Again, relics we sadly can't glitch. The reason we can't get relics like this, we actually can, but it doesn't count towards percentage. And as this category is 101%, that's kind of important, sadly. Um, so even though we can glitch relics, they're kind of fake because they don't actually give you anything for them, which is a shame. Here I'm going to check my pause menu to see if I got one. Let's have a look. So right there, you can see Sewer Speedway token has a blue token next to it. That means that I got it, which is really good. That's really good. So far, I've had three hits and one miss. I sadly wasn't able to get uh, get the trophy earlier, but I was able to get that token. So that's really, really nice. That's one less thing that we have to worry about at the end of the game. Really, really nice. Really, really good. So that's sweet. This is the final time, by the way, I'll have to do the glitch in this way with the battle mode because the level we are about to go into, uh, Dingo Canyon, might look familiar. And that's because that's the level we've been using to glitch. So now that we have it unlocked, we can just stay in adventure mode and use, use the level portal um, to do the glitch. So that's great. It saves about a minute every time. So that's, that's nice, but this is the next level. This track actually, um, it's it's quite amusing really because this track is probably one of the like least interesting tracks from a speedrunning point of view. It's a lot of speed ghosts, which can be interesting, especially if they go well, but there's no like crazy flashy shortcuts in this level. However, it just so happens that there's one of the most game-breaking oddities in any game I've ever seen ever in it which is hilarious. Again, we just need to get the CT in our letters and we will get the trophy and the token at the same time. And by the way, that boss key, the third boss key I got, it was the uh, This Homeworld's um, boss. I noticed it when I, when I paused the game just a second ago. I got This World's boss key. So that means that after this level, uh, what would usually happen in casual play um, or in any percent no major glitches or a category like that is Papu Papu would would appear and he'd be like you suck man you can't beat me and then after you beat him he'd be like oh dude you don't suck man you beat me and that's the whole thing whereas now because I already have his boss key um, I won't have to sit through that and I won't even have to play him which will obviously save a lot of time over having to do that. So, fun fact, actually, in, in my uh, in my warm up run that I did yesterday um, for this, I actually didn't get the Papu key, and I ended up just racing him normally. So, over the run I did yesterday, I'm just about to save like three minutes because right here, instead of watching a boss cut scene, I can just play the game which is fantastic. Rampage Ruins. This is a crystal challenge. It's the type of level that we've been using to break everything. 
Um, but we're actually going to play this because, you know, at some point we do have to beat them, <laughs> unfortunately. I actually think, though, genuinely, that Crystal Challenges are some of the most interesting levels to watch. Um, in terms of a technical point of view. Unlucky. Don't die to it. Ooh. Oh, okay, okay. I tried to get that crystal still. Didn't quite work. Gonna have to go back around. Unlucky. Um, just because when they go well, um, they can look very, very fast. Hopefully, I'll be able to show off um, the one in World 3 because that one is unbelievably flashy when it goes well. But yeah, this is Rampage Ruins. Very, very um, basic crystal challenge. Probably one of the more basic crystal challenges in this run. Uh, we won't actually be doing, hopefully, as long as the route goes according to plan. We um, we shouldn't be doing the uh, <clears throat> the crystal challenge in the first world, just because we're going to glitch that as well. Um, because there's a um, there's a glitch actually, but doesn't involve Dingo Canyon, weirdly enough, that we can utilize. Um, so that's going to be interesting. But for now, we're back to not glitching. We're back to driving. Um, so bit of a breather for seven, eight minutes. There is still a lot going on, though, especially in Papu's Pyramid, which is the level after this. Um, but in Tiger Temple, that RNG shortcut I was talking about a couple couple tracks ago in the relic they decided to keep that permanently open and if you drive well enough um you can actually do the shortcut route all three laps and still get the gold relic because in relics these boxes stop the timer for as many seconds as it has on the box and the game designers intended you to go the long way at least one of the laps because they put a bunch of relic boxes around there However, in the interest of this RTA speedrun, the relic boxes aren't going to stop my real timer, the speedrun timer. So it's going to be quicker if I can barely get gold, which is a 102, by the way. Um, a 102 and not go the long way, if I can help it. So I'm going to try for that now. It's a little bit risky. It only saves about three seconds, but... With that two box and that one box, I should get it. I can even get this one box if I want to be safe. And yeah, we're going to beat 102. You, you have to hurry up a little bit if you want to do that, but you can just sneak in a gold relic and that's all we need for uh, for 101%. So that's very, very good. That's very, very nice. Okay. We saw, I just saw a question in chat. There is actually a Taz for any percent warpless, which is um, a category where you get Dingo Canyon, um, and then, okay, I guess I muscle memory and went to Cocoa Park before Papu's Pyramid. Ignore me. We're doing this level first. It doesn't matter. It doesn't lose any time. Um, there's a Taz of any percent warpless, which is basically you get to Dingo Canyon and then you do this glitch three times. Um, you glitch one of the keys, one of the boss keys every time, and then you beat the final boss. Uh, there has not been a Taz of 101% glitch. However, my god would I love to see it, because it would probably smash world record by, like, a lot. <laughs> like, a lot. Um, but, yeah, I, I think a Taz of this category would be very, very interesting. If you guys want to check it out on YouTube, by the way, there is a Taz of any percent no major glitches as well, which showcases um, just pure driving, just prowess. I don't even know what other word to use. It's ridiculous um taz of this game are absurd man um the world record for any percent no major glitches just for context the world record is 48 21 and the taz gets the equivalent of a 41 minute time if it was on ps2 and used the same timing as as we do so yeah and, and that's a category that doesn't use all the glitches so can you imagine can you imagine? Gold Relic for this is 112. I don't even need to really pay attention in this one. It's a 105. It's uh, very, very easy. We don't really need to go after too many boxes here. So that's, that's very, very nice. All right, 
two relics remain, and then we're back to glitching. But honestly, with this run, again, things are going to get volatile, I'm sure. But for now, uh, this run has been pretty solid. I've had two boss keys and a hub one token in Super Speedway from the glitches, which is really, really nice. And um, yeah, one miss. I didn't get an early trophy, unfortunately, but you know, you can't have it all. Um, okay, Papu's Pyramid Relic. I am actually going to explain what's going on in this level because um, last time I was expect I was uh, explaining one shortcut and only one shortcut. Um, however, because we can't get masks in relics because there are no items, I will explain this one. Basically, this game doesn't want you to be on the wall, but with some careful balancing, we can stay on it and just drop off to the finish line there. Um, if you're wondering why, by the way, the shortcut last time with the mask counted the lap from the very start but why in the relic we need to go all the way around the track first before we can do that shortcut um it's because i landed in a certain area which for some reason is the only area of the track that the game allows you to land in and for whatever reason um probably a fail safe when developing the game maybe i don't actually know the legitimate reason so take that with a pinch of salt but for whatever reason, that is the only area of the track that is loaded. And when you land in it from in front of the start line, um, it counts your lap, which is unreal. That's a really, really nice relic. If you mess up once in that relic, it can get really out of hand because gold relic is a 109. And let's say I make like a seven, eight second mistake. Suddenly it's like kind of tight whether or not I get it, so. Yeah, it's a scary, scary relic, that. But luckily, we didn't mess up. Got the gold relic to a maz. Go for another dialogue skip here. Unlucky. All right, final relic of this world. And then we fully completed this world, because, again, we don't need to do the tokens and the trophies individually because of that glitch. Um, so as we were getting the trophies, we were obviously getting the letters as well. Once we do all the relics, that is the end of this homeworld, and we never have to come back here, especially as we've already got the, uh, the Papu key as well from the glitch, so... Very good. After this relic, we'll be back to glitching. This is one of the, uh, honestly, one of the easiest relics in the game. Um, I sometimes get Platinum Relic here without really concentrating on getting boxes, just because it's really, really lenient. Gold here is a 109. Um... But there are so many boxes that are like three or two. But obviously stop the clock for three seconds and two seconds, but it becomes very, very easy. My, my timer is only at 13 seconds right now when I'm on lap two. Like, very, very uh, not difficult, this one. But there are easier relics, and uh, we'll get to those later, but... There are some relics where the game designers went real easy on you. But yeah, th th this should be an easy gold, or maybe even a plat. So we'll see. Oh, that's a nice SG. Keeping the downhill momentum through the lake section is really, really nice. Yeah, that's lovely. And yeah, th th this might be a platinum. Platinum is a 53 seconds, by the way. Yeah, it's plat. <laughs> nice. Incredible. Inspirational gaming. All right. By the way, in case you're wondering, I got 20 out of 38 boxes. If I get 38 boxes, uh, the reward for getting all the boxes is um, you get 10 seconds taken off your time, which is, again, really, really nice if you're casually playing the game and trying to get all the platinum relics it can be very very useful to have that 10 seconds all right so we don't need to um go to the battle mode anymore and go to the arcade mode outside of adventure mode to do the glitch anymore um because we already have dingo canyon token unlock now in our adventure mode file so we're just going to save the game do the trick where we hit x and start on the same frame this is a slightly different setup, but it's about a minute faster now that we have it unlocked. We're going to go into Rampage Ruins, quit like we were doing before, but then 
when we quit, what we can do is instead of going into like arcade mode and accessing Dingo Canyon that way, we can just hit load and go into Dingo Canyon token because it's right there. And it'll do both parts of the trick for us. It will not only save the token in memory for the next trophy we enter, but it will also do the Dingo Canyon part of it where we have a certain camera angle, blah, blah, blah. So this is really, really nice. Now that we have this unlock, it saves about a minute every time. So with this route, considering I have two boss keys from the glitch and one hub one token, I think I'm going to go for a gem. And to get a gem, which is the hardest setup, by the way, I'm going to have a reverse camera angle and I'm going to get a start boost. And I'm going to time my circle input as the camera comes towards Dingo. The reason why this is by far the hardest, um, like by a mile the hardest, I got yellow gem. Let's go. That's really big. The reason why that is by far the hardest setup is because you hit circle to leave the level whilst the camera is still moving. So you only have cert like a certain amount of frames, maybe two or three frames at max to hit circle to get the gem that you want to get. Every other setup I've, I've done so far with Dingo Bingo, it's been a still camera. I've waited for the camera to, to be completely still before leaving. With gems, it's really, really tough because it's a moving cam. So keep that in mind, I suppose, whenever I say I'm going for a gem because things could get messy. Um, I will be doing a safe route if gems absolutely troll me because... I don't know about you, but I don't exactly want to be sat here for 20 minutes waiting for the game to give me what I want. <laughs> I'm going to be real. I don't think anyone wants that. So if that does start happening, if the game does start trolling, uh, there is a backup route which I can do, which only loses like three or four minutes and is a lot easier. So it's a lot less stress-free, but ideally I don't want to do it, but we'll see if I have to or not. Again, because of that glitch, now I have the trophy and token in the same race. So I'm going to be able to... Oh, I ran out of reserves. Okay, that was the tightest jump of all time. What happened there was I wasn't, um, I wasn't mini turboing enough. I wasn't boosting enough, and so I ran out of speed. And uh, that nearly cost me that shortcut. I very nearly fell in the lake right there or bumped into the rail. Either one of them would have been pretty bad. Um, but yeah, we're good. Okay. This is an example of a glitch where I won't be going to Dingo Canyon. So Dingo Canyon has a very unique uh, property in this glitch where um, you can like get any item from the game you choose, depending on the camera angle you hit that Wumper through at, right? It's a very weird um, little like quirk that Dingo Canyon has that happens to break this wide open. For some reason, certain other tracks are tied specifically to one item. No matter what camera angle you use in a different track, it will give you the same item every time. And so what's going to happen here is I am going to go back into the level I was just in, Blizzard Bluff. I'm going to go into the token, so again, the next trophy is um, a trophy and token at the same time. I'm going to go into the token here, and I'm just going to hit a Wumper Fruit and just mash X. Doesn't matter what my camera angle is, doesn't matter anything. I'm not even going to check the pause menu afterwards because this level, for whatever reason, is always guaranteed to give you the purple token, the Crystal Challenge token, from World 1. Listen, you could pay me a million bucks to explain why. I I don't know. I don't know. I really don't, but go figure, man. <laughs> go figure. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's really, really nice because it's a really, really quick setup. I don't need to like wait for a camera angle or anything to run through right at the start of a level. And I don't need to drive all the way to Dingo Canyon to do the glitch. So it's really, really fast to just do that one. It's also risk-free, which in a category that's this volatile is so nice. 
It's so nice that you're just guaranteed it no matter what. It really is. Um, because of all the glitchiness that's been happening, I've basically been forgetting to talk about the tracks I'm in. This is Dragon Mines. It's okay, to be fair. I'll be revisiting the relics of every level, and I'll be able to talk about the tracks more there. Ooh, this minecart. Ooh, this minecart. Oh. <laughs> that minecart was so close to hitting me. It's insane, but we're fine. We're fine. I wasn't nervous. You were nervous. What are you talking about? Um, yeah, this track is called Dragon Mines. There is only really a couple things notable about this track. The, the main thing that's notable is this minecart shortcut. Because um, it's one of the few shortcuts in the game where you on purposely lose reserves. Um, what you do is you, you break and you jump so that you maintain the momentum you had before you braked. But what braking in this game allows you to do is turn really sharply. And I will be referring to that as a U-turn. And um, what you turning is, is basically just turning really, really sharp, but you sacrifice your reserves. And that is actually worth it for that minecart shortcut. So that's really, really good. Um, I don't know how I didn't get crushed by the minecart, by the way. I have no idea. Um, but we got away with one. Okay, so if I have a look at this pause menu real quick, I have Komodo Jokey. You can see that right there. I have Komodo Jokey. So that means that the only key that I haven't glitched yet is Pinstripe. It's Pinstripe Key. Um, and that's a shame because Pinstripe Key is like paramount to this route working. So I need to go for it. The only problem with going for it um, is that there is a very, very high probability that the game will tell me that um, I've already got an item and tell me to retry when I do this glitch. The reason why is because I have every other key already. So instead of giving me the pinstripe key, the game might, if I'm unlucky, let's say, give me Ripperoo key or Papu key or a key that I already have. And then it will say, do you want to retry? Because you've already beaten this level, which is what it usually does. If you're casually playing and you beat a level you've already beaten. So hopefully we get lucky and we get lucky quickly um and we get given pinstripe key keys are basically rng they're technically not but the setup is to break and then mash circle unlucky got told to retry um the setup is you you break and slowly go down the hill and then mash circle and because it's mashing it's it, it's not rng technically Technically, it's not RNG, where the camera lies when you're done mashing. Technically, if you optimally mash, you know, you'll be fine. But you're a human being and you don't have a robotic arm. That being said, I may have just gotten it second try. Show me four keys. <laughs> that is so... Oh, oh, this run is... You know? This run ain't all that bad. Can I just say? <laughs> um, yeah, so as you can see at the top of the screen, I now have four keys. And that means that I don't have to do another boss until the final boss, which is right at the end of the run, obviously. Um, so that's insane. Uh, that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, okay, next track, Polar Pass. This is a track that, in any percent NMG, or no major glitches, um, the main category for this game is one of the big deciders of the run, mainly because of a shortcut called Boomerang, where you are able to jump off that wall to the right of me there and skip this section that I'm going to drive on. I need to do this on lap one just because the R is there, and I need the letter R to obviously get the trophy and token at the same time. Um, so that's really, really important. But besides that, this level is pretty standard. The T is going to be off the final jump. The main decider of this level is that shortcut that I just mentioned earlier, and I will be going for it on lap two and three. Okay, nice. Got the T. That's all the letters, so now we can just focus on the important stuff. And just focus on the shortcut. Again, because of all the glitches and all of, like, the potential retries or not retries, whatever, um... 
This shortcut holds a lot more weight in other categories, but let's see if we can do it. Nice. That's really clean. And I kept reserves out of it. You saw how I immediately like was able to jump and keep boosting. That was a really clean exit from the shortcut as well. That was really, really nice. If I can get one more lap like that, there are no complaints from me. There are no complaints from me. Little corner cut here. You can not jump off the big jump now that I have the letter from it and take that corner slightly tighter. 39 lap two is really nice. If you look under uh, the top left big timer, having a really nice lap two there. Sub 40. All right, let's see if we can get one more. Oh, yes, dude. Two out of two boomerang this run. At least so far. We will be doing three more of that shortcut when we come back here to do the relic. But uh, for now, that is that is about all I, all I could ask for, really. This run is really good so far. I know that's like the jinx to end all jinxes. But like, that is really good. 38.83 lap three. That is... Okay. That's really good. Okay, so I should mention just before we go into this next glitch before Tiny Arena, which uh, Tiny Arena is the level in the CTR speedrun. It has the most important skip that is a do or die skip. So that's coming up. But after Tiny Arena, we, we will be taking, excuse me, a little break um, here at GDQ. We like to do that. So we will be stopping for five, ten minutes so y'all can get up and stretch and try to rack your brains about what you've seen here. I think <laughs> I'll join you <laughs> in you're, you're trying to rack time, my yeah, brain yeah. about what I've seen. <laughs> but um, yeah, one final glitch before that happens. And then tiny arena skip. So, okay. Now that I've gotten all four keys, I'm not going to lie, that is a huge weight that has been lifted off my shoulders because not having to worry about bosses is wonderful. Um, so I think now, I think now the play would be to either go for another gem. Um, the gem cups, by the way, or the gems, by the way, are basically... Um, at the end of the game, you play in, like, cups of four races, and at the end of the four races, you get a gem. But obviously, every time we do this glitch, we're able to skip four tracks, which is crazy. So we're going to go for another gem here. We already have the yellow one. Unlucky, got told to retry. That honestly means, the fact that I got told to retry there, honestly, that probably means that I got yellow gem again, which is... Uh, insane consistency, considering it's a couple frames. It's not the type of consistency you want, but hopefully we can get, like, a different color gem here. Man. Okay, I'm getting trolled. Let's change it up. Okay. If in doubt, let's mix it up. So, gems are clearly not being kind, so let's instead go for a Hub 1 token. Let's go for a Hub 1 token. We've only got one of those so far. we got Sewer Speedway. So let's go for one of those instead. Let's go for one of those. See if we're lucky. Okay. We got a hub one token. This is what I mean by I might need to do a safer route because gems are awfully, awfully hard. I got mystery caves. That is unbelievable. Okay. So I have all of the hub one tokens except Crash Cove already. So my hub one cleanup is going to be unbelievably fast. Um, that's going to be really, really quick, um, which is lovely. Um, so, yeah. All right. Final level before we take a quick little break here. Tiny Arena. Right. If you know, you know. Um, this shortcut I was referencing earlier that nitros might be important for a shortcut. Uh, this is the track where they are important. I'm going to want to get 10 Wumpa Fruit so that I can get nitros instead of tnts and basically what we're going to do is at the end of lap one when we're near the start line we're going to place a nitro against a wall hit it at a very specific angle and try and launch ourselves up and over the, the wall um if you play mario kart 64 this may look relatively familiar it, it's 
this track's very similar to Wario Stadium to the point where it even copied its shortcut. It's way harder than the Mario Kart 64 shortcut. Like, way harder. The wall is way higher. As you can see, the walls on the left and right of me are pretty high. Um, but we are going to attempt to launch ourselves up and over the wall to our left here. Let's see if we can do it. I'm going to place the Nitro here. Turn around, go off his turbo pad, and wish me luck. I went to the moon! Okay, that was awesome. Oh, uh, <laughs> let's see if we can do that again. We've got it one for one. We get two attempts at it. Let's see if we can do it once more. Dude, I got Tiziano and Tiny Arena this run. Oh my goodness. <laughs> First of all, I'm going to need RNG to cooperate. It is a 40% chance to get a Nitro, and I have blown it. Can I get a Nitro? No, I can't. Would you believe me if I said it's a 40% chance? Because uh, it doesn't feel like it sometimes. Okay, there we go. All right, let's see if we can do it. We'd lose about 10 seconds there. Let's see if we can make that back with the shortcut. Unlucky, unlucky. Honestly, that's what I was expecting on lap one. <laughs> it didn't happen, but yeah, I mean, Listen, we'll, we'll take one out of two. That's, that's more than I was expecting for a short cover that, that's uh, that difficult. Um, the problem with that shortcut, honestly, is that you only get one attempt at it. That's like the only real issue. Um, because, you know, the moment the nitro explodes, your, your opportunity is gone, right? So it's, it's very, very difficult sometimes to... Um, Nice. I got a Nitro on lap three when it's useless. <laughs> Great. Great. I feel like I feel like the game is begging for me to go for this on lap three, even though it would lose me time if I did. <laughs> but you know, for swag purposes, yeah. you know, for the culture, I feel like it's got to be done. I could just cross the finish line right now, but let's have some fun, shall we? <laughs> let's have some fun. Come on, game. Come on, game. Come on, do it. Let, let me have it. Go on. No! This game is <laughs> no fun. This game is no fun. Tragic. All right, so after I get out of this loading screen, uh, we will have no boss cutscene, but then I will give um, Tech a countdown to pause the timer, and we will take our break. Um, yeah, so good, I will just good. quickly do that. See if I can get one final pause. Unlucky. And three, two, one. Pause the timer, please. Again, if awesome. you feel the need to stretch, uh, grab some water, whatever you need to do, go for it. But yeah, we'll be right back. Yeah. Stay tuned, everybody. See you in a bit. Hello and welcome back everybody to the GDQ Hotfix. We're in the middle of a racing game showcase done by HypnoShark uh, in the middle of this Crash Team Racing 101% speedrun. Before we get back into it, I just want to make a couple of announcements. One is that uh, join us February 17th and 18th for a celebration of Black Speedrunning Talent and Black Joy because Unapologetically Black and Fast is back. Submissions are now open for UBAF through January 9th. Use the command exclamation point UBAF in chat for more information. And also a reminder that your subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel help support games on Quick Hotfix. If you enjoy watching speedruns daily, consider subscribing to the channel. And uh, let's go in and do the second half of this run, Hypno. All righty. So we just got done with Tiny Arena Skip, um, and we are about to go into the final world. However, because this run has been quite the roller coaster, as you can see, I already have the final world's boss key. <laughs> so just to preface this. All right. I'll give you a countdown on restarting the timer. Three, two, one, and we're off. All right. Back to glitching. So the next track will be Engine Labs. Again, the start of the final world. Um, but before that, we have four more glitches to do because we can do as many glitches as there are trophies because obviously the glitch ends um, by getting a trophy and a token at the same time. So, there are four trophies left, because there's only one more world left, and each world has four tracks. Um, so we have four more opportunities to get items from Dingo Canyon. So far, 
we have gotten all the boss keys from the glitch, and we've gotten two of the Hub One tokens. So, I believe, because there are four gems left, and there are four opportunities to glitch left, if I was doing the optimal route here, um, I would be doing, um, yeah, I, I, I would probably be going for all four gems to round out this run. However, depending on how RNG smiles down upon me, we'll see if that happens or not, but that's what we're going to go for. So backwards camera, start boost, got to time my circle and put perfectly here. That's unlucky. I think I got to wait just a little bit. I think what's happening is I'm hitting circling just a little bit too early. And because of that, I'm getting um, items that I already have, maybe even um, the purple tokens. Because fun fact, if you go too early on the gem setups, you actually don't get a gem at all and you get purple, uh, purple tokens. So that might be better. That also might be too late, but we did get something, but we don't know what. Unlucky. I don't think I... Man, unlucky. Okay, so we're going to be doing the safe route this run. Unfortunate. Basically, what happened there is I went too late. And what that means is that you don't get anything that's relevant to adventure mode. I maybe got, like, let's say... Um, could have potentially gotten something to do with time trial mode or arcade mode there. Um... But yeah, unfortunate. Nothing that helps us in the speed run was gone there, which is unlucky. Loses about a couple minutes, but that's okay. One or two minutes, but that's fine. We will be doing the easy route, which means... Uh, <laughs> the easy route means that this run is going to have an unbelievably anticlimactic ending. Um, which again, if you know, you know. It's really, really funny. You'd imagine a racing game ends by crossing the line of a track, but... Now, with the route that we're doing, this run is not going to end like that. Um, that is cool, though, because it means that I get to show off a, uh, a slightly different glitch. This safe route is going to be doing uh, a slightly different glitch. So, honestly, I don't I don't hate this. This is it's actually a good showcase of <clears throat> the amount of glitches in this game and what can be done. So, I don't hate that. All right, Engine Labs, first track of the final world. This track implements a new uh, tech called Ultimate Sacred Fire, or USF. I'm going to go off this turbo pad and not jump. And as you can see, I'm going really, really fast. Because when you go off a, a USF pad, I'll be shortening Ultimate Sacred Fire to USF. When you go off a USF pad without jumping, your reserves get converted into that speed. And depending on how many reserves you have, you will keep that speed for as long as you don't boost. So, all of this boosting that I'm doing right now, getting my reserves as high as physically possible, is so that when I go off this USF pad at the end of the track, right here, I'm able to keep the speed for as long as I can. Um, as long as my reserves will allow me, and as long as I don't boost. For some reason, the moment that you boost, um, the USF will end. So it really, really is important to get your reserves up um, before the USF pad. Because if you don't, you, it's not like you can increase them afterwards. Because again, boosting will cut them off. So, really, really important to boost well and not hit any walls in this level. It's a level that like you shouldn't really ever mess up. But if you do, things can get really, really messy really, really quickly. Um, yeah, that's not bad. Opening to the hub. Very, very nice. Nearly lapped Pura. Actually, I may have done. I don't know, that was close. But yeah, get the trophy and token at the same time, so that's great. And uh, yeah, time for another glitch. Again, I didn't get a gem, unfortunately, there. Which was unlucky, so we're still missing four of the gems. The plus side of this, though, is the... Um, the plus side of this is that I have really, really good Hub 1 items. Because I was able to glitch all of the tokens earlier, which is really good. I'm just going to be saving here. I'm purposely bonking just to 
break really fast. And then starting the glitch again. Again, if you're just coming into the stream to explain this glitch one more time, we're going to be hitting X and start on the quit menu here. And that leaves the quit menu in an incorrect way, which stores the quit menu in memory, which then means we can exit to the main menu from a crystal challenge, which then stores the crystal challenge in memory. And from there, we can go into Dingo Canyon token and get any item from the game's inventory that we please, because the game thinks um, that Dingo Canyon is a crystal challenge because we just stored that in memory. Um, but for whatever reason, hitting this Wumper Fruit just tricks the game into giving us all types of items. And then because we left this the incorrect way, Dingo Canyon token will be stored in memory. And the next trophy we go into will be a token as well. And because finally trophies and tokens have the same win condition, we will get both items from finishing in first place. So that's the whole glitch. But for this, we're going to be, again, going for a gem. I think it's really our only play at this point. It's the only item that we really need. So I'm going to go for a gem here. That should be a gem. I'm pretty confident with that timing. Uh, the camera looked to be in a pretty good spot when I hit circle. I think that's, that's a gem. It's a purple gem. Nice. So that's what we wanted last time. Um, and uh, we got it this time, so... Still three gems down, unfortunately. Would have loved to have been only two gems down, but is what it is. Um, next level is Cortex Castle. Again, we'll be getting the, uh, the CTR letters in this as well, obviously, as we have been doing. But Cortex Castle, I always describe this level as probably the hardest level um, in the game that doesn't have an unintended shortcut, I would say. Um, I, I would say this track is really, really, really difficult, especially for casual play. Um, the AI in this track are probably the hardest to beat casually. And um, in general, all of the right angle turns are really, really hard for Dingo to navigate. I should mention, by the way, um, as we've got some, I wouldn't even call this downtime, but as I'm not like explaining any crazy shortcut or glitch or anything. The reason why we're playing is Dingo Dial here um, is because he has the best speed stat in the game, coupled with Tiny. Um, you can play as either Dingo Dial or Tiny and be optimal. Um, however, fortunately for me, Dingo Dial is my favorite character in the franchise, which is incredibly lucky. Uh, that it happens to be the case that he's optimal also. Um, but a legitimate reason why most people play as Dingo Dial instead of Tiny is because Dingo Dial actually takes up less of the screen. His character model just isn't as big. And what that means is if the AI are trying to troll you and they like place a TNT in your face or something, you have an easier time seeing past Dingo Dial's frame to see like oncoming wounds, items, this kind of thing. Um, so that's a legitimate reason to play Dingo Dial. Um, you may, uh, if you've like been keeping up with this speed game for a while, you may be wondering why I'm not playing as Coco or Engine. Um, Cause back in the day, back in, I would say 2017 and before, Coco and Engine were seen as the optimal characters. Uh, they have very high acceleration and better turning. However, less speed, um, which meant that they lost a lot of time in a lot of levels that were SG dependent and purely based around getting a lot of speed. Um, and as time moved on, Dingo Dahl had more and more strats developed for him in levels like Cortex Castle and levels that have a lot of... Um, a lot of like really, really tight turns. And for that reason, Dingo Dahl eventually uh, became the optimal character. Dingo Dahl and Tiny, I should say. Yeah, that was Cortex Castle. Pr pretty like technical level, but no like crazy shortcuts or glitches to speak of. Very hard level though, um, in terms of the intended stuff that you do in it. Two more glitches remain, because two more trophies remain. 
Again, there's only three gems left. So I think I, I should definitely just go for two of them, for sure. I think that's really my only option. I already have yellow and purple. So I'm either looking for red gem, green gem, or blue gem now. Any one of those is absolutely fine. I don't really mind which I get, um, as long as I get one of them. Um, yeah. That's the aim. That is the aim. See if we can do it. If we can do it, that just means that we have less to worry about um, in the end game. Because obviously the more items that we can get from this glitch, the less we have to play when we go back to worlds trying to get relics and stuff. Um, so, that's the idea. See if we can do that. Okay. Let's see if we can do that. Gem setup again, I'm going to be using the far camera and I'm going to be hitting R2 and then getting a star boost. I should say, by the way, it is incredibly fortunate that this out of bounds death right here lines us up perfectly with the one for three. Because without it, this category would be unbelievably RNG and luck based. It would be all over the place. I was unlucky there. I probably got a gem that I already have, unfortunately. Um, so we go again. Every time I get told to retry, that's pretty much what it means. It means that I've already gotten that item when I hit circle or X, whatever you want to use. I use circle, but whatever you want to use. Unlucky. Unlucky. Keep trying. We keep trying. Historically, I have been relatively unlucky with third... Uh, with the third gem. I don't know why, but my runs always seem to struggle when there's three gems remaining for me to get. Obviously, the more gems you have, the harder this gets um, because you have so many gems already um, that the game will tell you to retry more often, which is, of course, not what you want. Yeah, that's three retries in a row. That's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Probably loses like a minute. Let's see if we can get it. In fairness, a minute in this category isn't that much. <laughs> in terms of what can be lost. Just a little bit later on that timing, I think I got it. A little bit later. And I think I got it. I could be wrong, though. The problem is, is I'm trying to hit circle, just to give you guys some insight as to what's going on and why I'm failing it. I'm trying to hit circle when the game says congratulations CTR token awarded. As you can see, it like pops up briefly, but it's constantly flashing because as the camera angle changes, the game is trying to give me different stuff. Um, and that's why the gem setups are the hardest because the camera is constantly changing and the items that you get change drastically depending on your timing. And that can come down to like a frame or frames. So, so it's really, really hard. This is, un this is unfortunate now. This is unlucky. I have a question for you, Hypno. Go for it. What time is it for you right now? What time is it for me? It is 10 to 11. All right. So at chat, everybody, in uh, 70 minutes, you need to go say Happy New Year's to Hypno Shark. Okay? True. <laughs> True. Dude, it honestly, gosh, it honestly wouldn't surprise me if you guys hear fireworks outside my window. Uh, that, really, that really wouldn't shock me uh, at all. I heard some fireworks at like half six, and I was like, bro, you're like five hours early, man. Like, what are we doing? Like, Yeah, our last runner was getting some too, like way early for no reason. Um, it'll be a good test of your of the built-in OBS noise suppression, so I guess we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is that what we're using? Yeah, yeah, the, the OBS you're using has yeah. that all built in, so. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Mm, at this point, no, I, I, I was thinking to myself at this point, is it worth going for a different setup? But it really isn't. Okay, as I say that, I get something. I don't know if it was a gem or a purple token or something. We'll see. Okay, okay. So what happened there was I didn't get a gem, which is really unlucky. However, I did get a purple token. Specifically, 
World 4's purple token. So that's interesting. At least I got out of there. At least I got out of there. Um, so as you can see on the mini-map on the bottom right, Nitro Court, which is the crystal challenge, is graded out red, which means I already have it. But I obviously did it through the glitch rather than... Um, Rather than, what's it called? Uh, through legitimate means, I should say. Alright, this is one of the more uh, flashy tracks. Uh, there are three shortcuts in this level. Um, so we will be doing nine shortcuts. Well, actually eight, because one of the laps I have to get the letters, sadly. But eight shortcuts. This is one of them. We go to the top of the spiral and then stick tight to the wall so the game doesn't count us out of bounds. Drop down. And the second shortcut, by far the easiest, but also the one that saves the most. You just turn around and jump over this wall. And last but not least, probably the hardest shortcut, but also saves the least amount of time. Hairpin. This invisible wall here, but I just jumped over, nice, is way bigger than it looks. Way bigger. Um, because of that, that shortcut is really, really tough, even though it doesn't look it. Um, I'll take this lap to not do the shortcut because I do need to collect these letters here. I need the C down the spiral and I need the R off this jump. Nice. Very good. Um, and then again back to the wall shortcut and then hopefully I can do a solid last lap. But th this uh, this track is one of the more nerve-wracking tracks especially in any percent no major glitches where this is like in the final 10 minutes of the run and Knees are weak, arms are heavy, etc, etc. Um, so it can get really, really tough, especially with Hairpin, because it's such a precise trick that comes down to pure timing, as well as your lines slightly, but mainly jump timing. Um, it's very, very easy to get hasty and go too early, or get too scared and go too late. But hopefully, if I get this Hairpin coming up, this is 3 out of 3 Hairpin, which would be... Really, really good. Doesn't exactly make up for the brutal trolling that just happened at the hands of the gem. But that is 3 out of 3 hairpin, and that is really, really good. That's a really good hot-ass skyway. Again, doesn't exactly make up for what just happened, but it is what it is. We have three gems to choose from for our final glitch of the day. By the way, th this glitch, you I'm not sure if chat referred to it as this at any point, actually, but it, it may have been referred to as Dingo Bingo. I'm not sure if that was the case. But I, I, I've seen those words in chat today, yes. Yeah, that checks out. Yeah, it's a pretty <laughs> it's a pretty funny name. I, I, it, it obviously comes from the fact that, you know, the trick can sometimes feel luck-based, even though it technically isn't, but it certainly can feel it. And it's Dingo Canyon. I like to imagine that it's because I'm playing as Dingo, but you know, it's neither here nor there. But yeah, Dingo Bingo is just a phenomenal name for this trick. It's truly great. <laughs> but uh, this is the last time you'll be seeing it. Because this is the last trophy in the run, and then all we really have left are relics and the gem cups that we didn't manage to glitch. Um, but don't worry, we'll be glitching those a completely different way. <laughs> Um, there's shout outs to the safe route that I'll be doing. Um, obviously the, the optimal world record route would attempt to get a gem every single time. Um, so, but it doesn't have to do safe strats, what you'll see later, but this run sadly does have to do some safe stuff, but that's okay. That is a-okay. Alright, I have three gems to choose from, which... Honestly, shouldn't be too hard. It should mean that the timing of my circle input should be made a little bit easier, but apparently not, uh, considering the way I was missing it earlier, but we'll see. Here we go. Let's see if we can get it. Unlucky. This is, again, the final Dingo Bingo, so hopefully we don't get trolled for too long. It is fairly common for... Out of all the setups to troll you, it is fairly common for the gem cups to be the most trolly, I guess is the uh, is the word I'll use. See if we got it. I think that was 
maybe like two or three frames early because any eagle-eyed people may or may not have seen but as the retry text appeared the text for like you won a token appeared behind it so that's really really unlucky that means i was very very close and again it actually happened twice in a row okay so i definitely need to uh, change up my timing ever so slightly and i do mean ever so slightly um but yeah, we're close now. Uh, I can feel it. I can feel that we're close. Come on. Come on, game. You know you want to. Deep down inside. You know you want to cooperate Hello, with me. There it is. That is. I'm pretty sure that's Red Gem. And if it is Red Gem, then I'm a magician. It's Green Gem. Close enough. <laughs> close enough. You know what? That's, that's fine. So, in the safe route at the end of this run i will be getting red and blue um but that's okay it's not the end of the world um okay final trophy race of this run that is the end of like the dingo bingo style glitches there is one more glitch that will come at the end of the run because of this route but for now that is the end of glitches oxide station this is also the final boss track as well um and uh it definitely looks like it, and it especially is in terms of the shortcuts you do. Again, this is a very, very scary track in any percent, no major glitches, just because of the nature of this shortcut in particular. You drop down the spiral. We will be going this way on the slap, just because we need to get the letter C, get the CTNR token. But uh, on lap two and three, you're going to see me drive the wrong way on purpose and then do a second part of that skip. Um, which should be interesting. This is the only time in the run, by the way, and this is probably the only category uh, where you see this space section. So this was like kind of an iconic area of, uh, of the track, but in speed runs, usually you completely skip it, but we do need those letters. So we will not skip it this time. But that is the only lap, sadly, that you'll see that low gravity area. Um, okay, so as for the shortcut, I'm going to drop down the spiral like I did on lap one. And the reason why that's important is because this game works with checkpoints so that if you land in a certain area, 10 seconds later in the track will load. And that's how the game continuously is able to load stuff. So if I try to do this part of the trick, that part, if I try to do that part um, without dropping down the spiral originally, the game wouldn't have that part of the track loaded. And so it's very, very important that I drop down so that I don't get respawned and so that the trick actually works. Otherwise, we could just like do the second part of a shortcut like right now. But unfortunately, we do have to drop down to a later part of the level and then drive backwards now that we've loaded that part in and jump on the rail again and jump down to this section that is now loaded in. This shortcut where I just jump to the left is very, very easy. It skips the entire space section that we did on lap one. It is as easy as it looks in terms of just jumping to the left. Um, but yeah, that is, that is the end of the dingo bingo section uh your brains now may rest <laughs> for a while uh we're gonna be doing um the relic clear up so we're gonna be going in reverse order through the hubs um we've already completed the entirety of um hub world 2 so we don't have to do that one um but we will be going and getting all the relics in this home where we'll start with the level that we just did oxford station the skip is fresh in the memory so we'll start by doing this. We would actually usually, in a in a standard route that acquired all the gems through the glitch, we would actually be doing Nitro Core at this point, but it's a crystal challenge similar to Rampage Ruins earlier in the run. Um, but because we got that via the glitch instead of uh, gems, uh, we can just skip that because we already have it, um, which is great. Um, worth mentioning, oh, I felt the shortcut uh, back up. Uh, there we go. Nice. And now we can just drive and drop down. Ooh, 
Um, worth mentioning about this relic. Obviously, the relics intended you to do no shortcuts. So in the tracks where there are absolutely massive shortcuts, um, <laughs> in the tracks where there are absolutely massive shortcuts, the relics are an absolute breeze. I believe the platinum for this, not even the gold. It's reminder that we only need the gold relic for 101%. Uh, the gold is a 256. I believe the platinum is a 234. And um, in the speedrun, without hitting any boxes, you can get sub two minutes. So that's, by the way, that's an example of me not loading enough of the level and the game respawning me because it hasn't loaded it in there. There we go. I had to land a little bit further up the track so that the game had that part loaded up. I just landed too far forward and because of that I landed in an area that the game hadn't loaded yet sadly. That was unlucky. Hopefully this last lap can be clean because so far this hasn't been the uh, the cleanest relic. I failed the shortcut on both laps so hopefully we can get a good one here. Lock down here, load a bunch of the track. Drive up the spiral, jump on the rail, drift and jump off the rail, and there we go, that's more like it. There it is. And yeah, so even with all of the mess-ups that I made on the skip, uh, the Platinum Relic is a 234, the Gold is a 256, and I'm going to get a sub two-minute Relic time. Uh, yeah, unintended shortcuts are the best, and I love them. Yeah, it's going to be like a 158 or something like that. Yeah. Pretty amusing. Pretty amusing must be said but yeah so that's the first of uh <clears throat> the first of many relic revisits that we'll be doing even though that is the final boss track by the way um that's the last time let's just say we'll be playing it like fully um because again anticlimactic ending incoming uh, <laughs> with this route but, okay, Hot Air Skyway next up. Fun fact, uh, the hairpin shortcut in this level that I demonstrated earlier um, is actually made easier in the Relic. Um, because there are 56 boxes in this level, the game lags quite a bit more than it usually does. And for some reason, uh, that can propel your jumps way higher than they would normally go otherwise. Um... And because of that, a hairpin is made a lot easier depending on the jump timing. Again, you still need to, like, get a somewhat good jump, but you can make it a lot easier. Like, for instance, how did that nearly make it? That was not a very good attempt. I U-turned way too early, and I still jumped so high that I nearly made it regardless. Um... Yeah, I, I deserve to fail that one, for sure. I probably just jinxed it now, and I'm probably just going to fail all three. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, that makes sense. That would happen. That checks out. Stay close to the wall there. Again, the reason why I drive all the way up and then turn around is the same reason for the Oxide Station shortcut, just for the record, just to point that out. That was a bit of a laggy jump. You can kind of see, actually... How, like, you get propelled forward sometimes like that. You can see it a little bit. But yeah, here's a good example of it. Going all the way up to the top of the spiral, turning back around. So I've loaded it all in. Hugging the wall and then landing. I don't want to land too far forward because, again, I need to be careful of landing in an unloaded zone. But luckily, I loaded enough there. Again, because of all these unintended shortcuts, I believe Platinum here is like a 202. Again, all we need is gold, but we're almost guaranteed Platinum when you're doing all these skips. Yeah, 202. Yeah. So, that one is made a lot easier. So, there we go. All right. Next relic. Next relic uh, is Cortex Castle. Um, again, the track that I said that is very, very technical. 
Now that we're kind of out of the glitch section of the run for a little bit, I can actually talk about why it's so hard. Um, because all of these 90 degree turns, not only they just don't agree with Dingo's turning, as I said earlier, but more importantly, um, keeping reserves in this level whilst doing so is really, really tight because of the ultimate sacred fire pad at the end of the level, which whilst being fast kind of sucks all of your reserves away. Um, and what this means is that area that I just did at the start of lap one, that area on lap two and three is going to be really, really tight for keeping my speed. Because um, there's not a lot of room to get mini turbos because my, my character's turning stat is so bad. Um, and I still need to like keep my reserves high while navigating those really, really hard turns. So this part here, I'm on purposely not going to jump to get USF. I'm going to go really, really fast through this section. I'm going to jump to maintain my speed. But now reserves through here are going to be really, really tight. And I have to navigate all these really, really tight turns. That was really nice. But that section is like one of the hardest parts of <clears throat> of just driving in this game, I would say. Not including like a shortcut or, or a glitch or anything like that, but just purely for purely for um for driving standpoint, that's like one of the harder parts. Definitely. One more USF here. Gold Relic, by the way, in this level is actually kind of hard because there are no unintended shortcuts to just abuse. So I need to get a 204 here. Uh, Platinum is a 132. We will absolutely not be getting Platinum here. I've missed way too many boxes to get Platinum, but that's fine. Again, Gold is all we need. Aiming for a 204. Should get it. I shouldn't really have to go out of my way for any other boxes now, I don't think. should be good yeah we're fine one more usf and that is cause it's castle and then we only have one more level left in the final world and we never have to come back to the final world which is very very nice yeah never have to come back here which is very good um actually you know what what whilst we're just waiting for engine labs i i do just want to say real quick just as I have the opportunity. Huge shout outs uh, to Etchy and Ray um, on Host on Tech. They are truly the only reason I'm here. Um, I got a message very late. I believe it was Christmas Day um, of Etchy asking if I wanted to do this and I couldn't have said yes quick enough. So <laughs> yeah, for, for, for real, like huge shout outs. Um, Etchy's, Etchy's the goat, dude. Um, Happy to have you. Yeah, much love, dude. <laughs> All right. Engin Labs, and that is how it's pronounced, I've decided. Um, this okay. <laughs> I believe you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Engin, yeah. Um, this relic is... Um, obviously, it says 215 for the Sapphire. We want gold. Gold is a 134. Casually, this is probably the hardest relic in the game. Um, to get the Platinum in a track this long it is 53 seconds um which is insane especially casually but the reason for that is because there is a huge stack of three boxes at the end of the level which the game design is intended for you to get them all if you're going to get the plan and you can see them all there um but to get the gold we only need a few of them we still need to do pay like somewhat attention just because you know, getting a 134 without any boxes is impossible. So we do need some boxes here, but in a category like max percent, which is 101% uh, but with all platinum relics, all arcade cups on all the difficulties and all time trial ghosts. In that category where you're getting all the platinum relics, this, this track is particularly interesting because getting 53 seconds or below is hard, so. Yeah, in max percent, this is quite tough. Well, that should be enough boxes. Uh, if my time is at 47, my average lap time in Engine Labs, usually if everything goes well, is at 42. Um, and 47 seconds plus 42 seconds is 
Uh, a number below 134. I can't math right now. So, yeah, we'll, we'll be fine. And the timer only just started, so it's less than 42 seconds. Less than my average lap, so we'll be fine. It's an easy gold relic now. And um, we are officially done with the last hub world, so we just have to clear up hub 3, hub 1, and um, Gemstone Valley, which is like the hub world in between hub 1 and hub 2, where the final boss resides, and uh, we are good. So that's hub 2 and hub 4 done. Um, I'm really, really happy in a weird way, but I got Nitro caught from the... Uh, from the glitch and not Rocky Road, because Rocky Road is the Crystal Challenge in Hub 3. And Rocky Road is one of the funner levels when it goes well to watch. So I really, really hope this can go well uh, coming up after this uh, relic here, because it, it looks very cool um, when it goes well. So hopefully we can get that. Um, so we'll see. Um, Polar Pass Relic. We did hit two out of two boomerang earlier. If you weren't here for the boomerang shortcut, we are going to be jumping off of a wall and jumping over a lake and doing like kind of a boomerang action in the way that we're going to be turning. We're going to be turning back on ourselves. So let's see if we can keep this golden streak alive. That's three for three. Wow. Um, can't remember the last time I had a 101% run that went five for five. Um, listen, it'd be pretty cool to do it now, is all I'm saying. Game, if you're listening, game, game, listen. Be pretty cool. Be pretty dope. I don't know. Just saying, maybe. Uh, <laughs> there, there is every chance that I just, I just plow headfirst straight into the wall uh, here. Or, or jump into the lake, either or, but we'll see. Uh, again, if I get the shortcut, there's really no need to pay attention to boxes. So let's see. Four for four. Okay. Uh, the game is apparently listening. Um, what, right. What's really, really nice um, about these boomerangs is I'm actually having good exits from them. Like, I'm not only making the shortcut, but I'm landing with speed. And I'm able to maintain it, which is really, really nice. Definitely gone better than expected. One more lap, and if I can get one more boomerang shortcut, that would be that would be really nice. Um, I think uh, I think chat. If uh, if Hypno gets five for five here, then you have to follow Hypno Shark on Twitch, Twitch.tv/slash Hypno Shark. And uh, you know what? We'll find out. Did you get it? Yep. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> I want a slight delay, so I'm not sure. <laughs> You know what? You know what's crazy? I also heard that if I hit all of that, you have to follow Etchy on Twitch as well. That's what I heard. Nah. That's what I heard. I don't know. I just I, listen. I don't make the rules. I just enforce them. Is what I'm saying. I listen. That's all I, I heard. Was... Yeah. Please, please follow Hypno Shark for uh, doing this run for us uh, on New Year's Eve slash New Year's in a little bit for uh, for Hypno in a second. So please do so. Uh, the easiest way to do so is just to hover over Hypnoshuck's name on the title of the Twitch stream. You just click the little heart. If you're watching After the Fact on YouTube, you can just check the YouTube description. And uh, please do so and check out Hypno's awesome content. What a legend, dude. What an absolute legend. <laughs> Actually, that's, that's just in time. Just in time for the level I was hyping up earlier. So I swear to goodness... Now would be a good time to cook, is all I'm saying. I would love <laughs> to get this. Um, so we've actually been able to skip two of the four crystal challenges, right? However, this one we have not been able to skip, which honestly, I'm kind of weirdly happy because I will attempt to uh, do this perfectly. And if I am, you will see me slaloming in between nitros really, really well. This end section is the part I'm talking about. I'm actually going to shut up and concentrate for this because this could look really, really cool. Oh, let's go, dude. Let's go. That looks... Uh, I will never get tired of doing that. It, it just... Yes. Yes. It's so nice looking. Um... Yeah, the, the route for Rocky Road is really, really, like, fast-paced. 
And um, yeah, it's, it's probably my favorite crystal challenge in the game, I would say, just because of that end section. All right, Tiny Arena. Tiny Arena Relic is um, not as interesting, sadly, as um, as the trophy slash token visit earlier in the run, because there are no items. Um, there are no items in this level, so we can't like get a nitro and do the skip. There is, believe it or not, actually a way to um, to do the skip without a nitro or without any item, and it's what the time trial world record for this track does. Shout outs to the time trialers, by the way. And um, let's just say it's nuts. You need to build up an, an immense amount of speed with like a crazy SG down the back straight here coming up. And then drift perfectly. And I, I believe there's an element of luck to it as well. And get up and over the wall without any nitro. But it's ridiculously stupid. And I've, I've never seen anyone uh, do it. Um, unless it's the Taz. Um, I've seen the Taz do it, but like, you know, it's the Taz. You, 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 like, you gotta take that with a pinch of salt, so. Um, again, by the way, shout outs to the Taz of this game. I highly recommend checking out, or should I say the Taz's of this game? Would really, really recommend checking it out because it's able to do some things that I could only dream of, frankly. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a very, very entertaining watch, I'll say. But yeah, this track, like without the shortcut, some people would call it boring. I'd call it technical. Um, it very, very much depends on where you stand. But I've always liked this track. I think it prioritizes when you're not doing the shortcut, of course, I think it prioritizes um, technical drifting and cornering and puts an importance on it because especially with Dingo because of all the tight turns like if you take one turn wrong it's going to affect the next turn especially in the uh, in the windy section on the right side of the mini map that I'm coming up to now by the way I should mention I talked about relics being easy earlier um, I talked about some relics being a lot easier than others um, this is, in my opinion, the easiest relic in the game. They were unbelievably generous with this. Um, I've only gone 13 boxes. There are no unintended shortcuts that I'm doing right now. Um, and Platinum is a 258. And I'm probably going to get that. Gold is a 322. Um, it's very, very lenient, this relic, which, honestly, I'm down. Um... Shoutouts to the beta of this game, by the way, where they made uh, placeholders and they made the relic for this level 220 and it was an absolute disaster getting 220 in this relic. Um, but yeah, in the uh, in the normal game, it's very, very easy there. I think, I think maybe they looked at the beta and were like, hmm, let's change this and then made it way too easy, but we'll take it. Two more levels in Hub 3, Blizzard Bluff and Dragon Mines. Um, Dragon Mines will come first, because we're doing this hub in pretty much reverse order, just because of the way that we spawn in after being one of the levels. Um, but this level, Dragon Mines, I didn't really talk about it, the importance of U-turning earlier, just because I was explaining glitches. But this is a pretty uh, pretty good time to be explaining it. Basically, what I'm going to do here is because this minecart shortcut is really, really tight and my turning stat with Dingo Dial is very, very bad, I'm going to hold down and right, square, and hop. And what that's going to do is, yes, I'm going to lose my reserves because I'm breaking. I'm hitting square to break. But if you hit down and right and square at the same time in this game, yes, you'll lose your reserves, but you'll do a really sharp turn no matter what your turning stat. Like that and like that. And so that's really, really important because, yes, I sacrifice my reserves, but I get turbo pad speed immediately back off that turbo pad right there. So it's not that big of a loss. 
and it's worth it to do a shortcut that skips that um, that wooden bridge section that I land on after doing the minecart shortcut. So it's really, really worth it. Um, either all I hit that wall. Okay, that's actually not bad. I, I'll let the minecart go first so I don't get crushed. Not, not the worst thing in the world. Platinum here is a 54. I only need gold though, which is a 111. And I will be getting like a 57. Yeah, 56. That's fine. Only got nine boxes. Again, it just kind of shows the power of U turning. The fact that you can get gold by 15 seconds by doing that shortcut cleanly and like keeping reserves for a lot of the level outside of that shortcut. Final level of the hub world, Blizzard Bluff. Um, it actually went relatively well last time, but again, couldn't really explain it because I was too busy explaining how we, we were bending the game to our will earlier. Um, but Blizzard Bluff Relic, again, another relic that kind of benefits from lag. Um, the amount of boxes in this level, the game kind of propels our jumps forward just because of lag, um, which makes some of the shortcuts a little bit easier, which is quite nice. Um, start by cutting that corner there and getting the three box. That's quite nice. Gold here is a 108 for the record. Um, so you can actually get 108s if you play this, like without any boxes, if you play really, really well, which is nice. So I'll be getting boxes for safety slash they're kind of in the way anyway, so may as well get them. But um, I should really uh, explain the shortcut here. Just a simple jump. This is an intended shortcut. However, this isn't. We're going to jump once and jump again and just jump barely over that rail. You're not supposed to be able to jump over that rail. Um, not an intended shortcut by the game developers. As you can kind of tell by the fact that there's no relic boxes over there. Like, if it's an intended shortcut, they would probably put boxes over there to imply that you should do it. However, they do not. But it is a shortcut regardless, and we can do that. That's nice. That will absolutely do. 52.99. And uh, that's Hub 3 done. So, we only have... Um, two hub worlds left, the hub world where the final boss resides, and hub one. Um, luckily, because of the glitch um, that we did earlier, we already have accumulated so many items from this hub world. But this cleanup is probably going to take, like... Like, the, that hub world cleanup that I just did, and the hub four cleanup probably took about 12, 13 minutes. This hub world is probably going to take about seven because I've already gone so much stuff from uh, from the glitch state. I've already gone Sewer Speedway token and the token from this level, because you may not recognize the fact that we uh, <laughs> that we collected the letters in this level, and that's because we didn't. We glitched them instead, which is fantastic. Um, so we only need to do the relic here. Do need to do the token and the relic in Crash Cove, sadly, but that's okay. Not the end of the world. Uh, the relic here is a 144, the gold relic. Um, again, this is another one of those relics that you kind of do need to pay attention to. Not the easiest relic in the world to get, so we're just going to get some boxes. Maybe be a bit too safe, but, you know. Can't be, uh, can't be too safe in a run like this. Get a couple two boxes. Maybe get this two box here. Let me get this two box here. Yeah, this will do. It's not really losing me much time to get these boxes that are out of my way. Because I'm still able to, like, keep my speed. And it's not like I'm missing out on, like, SG opportunities or anything like that by going for them. So, hopefully get an SG here. Speaking of which, try and carry it all the way to the turbo pad. Like so. That's not too bad. Could have been better. Could have been worse. If I can enter this last lap, um with about a minute on the clock, it means that I don't need to get any more boxes because the, the average lap for me in this track is about a 37 or a 36, depending on if it's um, like average or good. And um, gold, as I said, is a 144. So if I can get like, you know, around one minute going into the last lap, we're absolutely fine. Don't need to really pay attention to any more boxes. One more good SG. 
Oh, that's fast. That's not bad. Okay, we'll take it. Yeah, and again, don't have to worry about the relic. The platinum is a 132, so if this was max percent, I would have gotten a few more boxes, but yeah, 137, that's absolutely fine. Um, and yeah, all we have left now is um, Hub 1. So Crash Cove Token and Crash Cove Relic. Literally just two things remain in this hub. And then uh, the final area, which because sadly um, an optimal route would have all the gems by now and because I wasn't able to get all the gems, um, I still have two of them left. Red and blue, I believe. Um, I will be doing a backup, which does lose a couple of, um, does lose a couple minutes, um, to do, but to be fair, it probably saved time over, you know, losing 10 minutes sat there waiting to get a gem. So <laughs> it's also a lot more entertaining. So that's good. It's a lot more interesting. Um, it involves um, the battle mode glitch that we were doing at the start of the run. Um, however, we're going to do it a few more times than twice. And we're going to do it with a slight wrinkle as well. going to be an extra element. I used Cortex as a shield. That is so funny. <laughs> that's, that's comedy. Um, well, listen, the AI have their uses, you know? They are... <laughs> they have their uses. Wonderful. All right. Um, but yeah, this will... Actually, I, I should mention, this is the last CTR token we're going to have to do. Uh, we've glitched every other token that we would have to do, and this is it. The, by the way, the, the reason why we can't um, do Hub 1 token and trophies at the same time is because... And the reason why we can't glitch Ripper Roo, the first boss in the game, is because we need to unlock Skull Rock, which requires exactly one key um, to start this whole thing off, because obviously this the whole glitch um, that we were using earlier in the run starts with entering a Crystal Challenge. And sadly, we do need to unlock it by doing the first five levels, which is unfortunate, but we can't glitch those in the same way we could glitch everything else. But um, at the same time, it means that we can we can use the Dingo Bingo glitch to unlock, uh, not unlock, to get Hub 1 tokens later on. So it has its use in a way. Uh, final relic that is not in the last area. Final relic that's not like ridiculously easy as well. Um, this gold relic is a 105 um, and it does require some concentration. You need to get a few boxes, not too many, but enough. And ideally, don't make any mistakes. Like hitting wounds and stuff. This is the first level in the run. You may recognize it from the very, very beginning of the run. So, it's not exactly the hardest. But, um... Yeah, overall... Not too bad. Lap 2 here, so... Just keeping an eye on the time and making sure that... I don't need any boxes. I really, really shouldn't. My average lap here is about a 25-ish, 26. So, the fact that the timer is where it was when I crossed the line, I think some basic math tells me that maybe I could be safe and get some boxes. I think I'll just go wide here and get these. Get these, just to be safe. But I probably didn't need to. I, in fact, I definitely didn't need to in hindsight, but it's worth get the gold relic and uh, yeah, that is hub one done. So we're very nearly there. Very nearly there. Right. Final hub world. Um, let's go for one more pause. Nice. Let's get the Yuka dialogue. And yeah, th this relic coming up is in a track that you haven't seen yet. Um, called Slide Coliseum. You don't usually see this level actually in any percent no major glitches runs. Um, so this might be new to some of you who have only ever seen CTR in like marathon runs and stuff. Um, let's not 
anything too special about this track. I am going to go for a shortcut lap three that I never go for, but I just want to try it just to show it off. Um, I'll go for it lap three. Um, I am going to get a few boxes just to make sure that even if I do fail the shortcut, it's all right. The reason I usually don't go for the shortcut um, in this level is because it saves about one second, and if you fail it, it loses about 15, and it's pretty hard. So it's it's not really worth it, like, a lot of the time. Um, if you're, like, five seconds behind world record and, like, you have no time save and the only way to get any time is to go for it, then maybe, but, um, yeah. Like, but besides that, it's it's not really something that I, uh, I value going for, but I'll go for it once on lap three, just to attempt to show it off during this run. Um... Again, usually in this category, um, if I have all the gems at this point, I am actually just one level away from being completely done. Um, however, we do have some glitching still to go because I do not have all the gems. Let's see if I can do it. We're going to turn around here, load a lot of the track, and we're going to try and go in between the tires. Oh, nice. Okay, I didn't expect to get that. That's very, very cool. That's what the shortcut looks like. Um, I haven't gone for that in a really long time. I'm really happy I got that. That's sick. Um, yeah, th th that is not a shortcut that I would usually go for. But hey, we'll take it. Why not? Why not indeed? Why not indeed? Yeah, S Snooze Coliseum is a pretty good name for that level usually. But with the shortcut, it can be quite interesting. But again, it's very, very rarely worth going for. But it's quite funny to to go for that in a run like this. Okay, now usually I would have all the gems and I would go into the final level. However, you need all five gems to um, to unlock the final level. As you can see on the mini-map, it's, uh, it's graded out. So, for one last time, we are going to break the game. But this time, instead of doing the pause uh, buffering into a crystal challenge, we're going to do it into a boss race. We're going to quit. And now the game thinks that we're in a boss fight. This is important. There is now boss music on the menu screen, which is comedy gold. Um, and we are going to play as controller two. And we are going to hit ourselves 57 times. And that may seem a bit of a random number. Uh, however, it does have its importance. If I die three times in a level, the, the match obviously ends. But because of this very specific setup I've got, with um, player one in team two and player two in team four, um, for whatever reason, this glitches the game out. And as you can see, even though I'm hitting myself, player one will get fourth place and player two will get second place. And for whatever reason, again, have no idea why, this game is very weird. Um, this tricks the game into thinking that we're wrong warping. Or rather that we're... Well, I wouldn't say wrong warping, but we're, we're changing the game's memory. And we're tricking it to believe that the next place that we go is going to be a certain area depending on how many times we die. And if we die 19 times, aka hit ourselves 57 times, as player 2, we wrong warp directly to the credits. And don't worry, that's not where the time ends. Because otherwise, you know, why have I <laughs> done all this gameplay just to die 57 times and win? Um, that's what any percent is, and any percent in this game is literally just this. Like, I, I'm kind of doing an any percent run in the middle of my 101% run right now, but there is a purpose. And um, after I walk to the credits, the game will think that I am in a mix of battle mode and the final boss. Because I've stored the final boss in memory um, earlier, and now I'm storing the battle mode in memory. Um, and this is the only way to glitch gem cups outside Dingo Bingo without the game crashing. Um, this is the only way to do that. Um, 
any other way and it's a problem. So I'm just going to check how many times I've death abused. 11 times is said on the right side of the screen. So we need to do this eight more times and we are good. Eight more times and we are in the clear. Seven more times. But yeah, um, and the result of this glitch um, is that we can go into gem cups. We can go into gem cups and um, the game will think that we are in the final boss. So it will only try and load one AI, which is huge. Um, the reason this is important is because if the game tries to load seven AI into a gem cup in this state, it will crash. That's why going into Oxide before doing this was so important. Um, because the game thinks we're in a boss, it will only try and load one AI, because boss races only have one character that it has to load. And because of that, the game can deal with that and the game can load. So we're really playing on a fine line here um, by, by doing this, but there is a method to the madness, I assure you. Let's see. 17, so we need to do two more death abusers, and we are good. And one more death abuse, and we are good. But yeah, th there's a lot of uh, engines spinning out. There's a lot of it. <laughs> there's, there's an unbelievable amount of it. By the way, you may have... Um... Oh, oops. Uh, that's actually fine. I can do 20. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Time loss. Nice. Uh, 20 is fine. Instead of the credits, it activates the 101% credits. That's funny. Uh, that literally doesn't make a difference. Okay. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, that's funny. Um, yeah, that's fine. So, glitched cutscene here. And glitched credits here. And now that we are back into um, back into our adventure mode in the glitch state, you may hear that there is no music. We are in complete silence, and we have already three of the gems because we glitched them earlier in the run. But we're going to go into red gem cup, and thankfully for us, the game is not going to crash because of the fact that the game thinks we're in a boss. The game also thinks we're in battle mode, so instead of a lap counter, there is a life counter. I wonder what happens if I hit myself. Oh, we win. <laughs> what a great game. So, yeah, th this is the way we, we're we able to skip um, gem cups without the use of Dingo Bingo. It's a little bit slow, obviously, because we have to do all that damaging, which loses a lot of time, and then we still have to, like, technically play it, but it's obviously a lot faster than playing the whole track, um, like, a lot faster. Um, like, instead of playing a two-minute long level, we just die and win, because there's no AI. Uh, the reason why there isn't any AI, again, is because the game thinks we're in battle mode, and this game doesn't have battle mode AI. Um, this game only has racing AI. The only way to play battle mode is with another human player. This game doesn't have um, AI battlers, so no one else loads, and because no one else loads, you can just die, and the only position you can get is first place. So it's pretty neat. Um, so instead of having to play four tracks in their entirety and you know winning them all and doing well, uh, we can just do this and win. <laughs> And I will get the red gem for that. And we need to do that one more time. One more time. For the blue gem. Because again, we didn't get the blue gem earlier, sadly. Then we have one more relic. The relic from Turbo Track. Which we will unlock after having all the gems. And then the final boss. And considering we can do this. Um, we can do the gem cups like this. You may have figured out how this run is going to anticlimactically end now. Uh, you can probably put two and two together. The time is not going to end when I end the final boss uh, by crossing the finish line.
time is gonna end when I hit myself <laughs> for the last time. Um, which again is a hilarious way to end this run. Uh, if again, if I was doing the optimal route, time would end upon crossing the line because I wouldn't do this glitch to get the gem cups because I'd have them all. Um, but this is a safe, uh, a safe route, a very beginner-friendly route, and a very marathon-safe route. Uh, so it's good. It's very, very good. By the way, I would just like to mention, as we're coming towards the end of this CTR 101% run, um, I will be doing uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe 48-track DLC 200cc after this, um, which is a speedrun that I'm actually really, really looking forward to doing, genuinely. Um, it's really, really cool to be able to do a Mario Kart game live on the GDQ channel. That's really, really sick. So very much looking forward to that. Um, so yeah, that'll be a blast. Um, yeah, as we're winding down now, I think this is... I believe this is the last Death Abuse we'll be doing before the final Relic, which is basically the final track, but we'll play through fully. Because again, we can't glitch Relics, because sadly there are no items to hit ourselves with in Relics, which is a shame. Um, but... Yeah, this is the last track that we'll basically play through normally, and then time will be when I hit myself for the final time in Oxide. Um, so yeah, final level time. Turbo track. The name is kind of self-explanatory for this one, I feel. Um, there's a lot of turbos, and these turbos are USF pads, Ultimate Sacred Fire pads. They give us the fastest speed in the game, but very little reserves. So what this means is that there is a lot of trying to keep your momentum as opposed to trying to keep your reserves because you don't really have that many. Um, so you may as well just try and keep the crazy amount of momentum you have. By the way, but this track really, really shows off the power of U-turning, which is the, uh, the tech that I mentioned in Dragon Mines. Like, it really shows it off well. By the way, the, the Relic times in um, in Turbo Track and Slide Coliseum are unbelievably forgiving. Uh, the gold here is a 140. Um, and realistically, you should never be even remotely close to that. Actually, that might be Slide Coliseum. I think gold is a 132 here, which is still incredibly easy i believe platinum might be a 119. it, it says a lot that i i know every relic time except for this one because i've never paid attention to it ever because it's never important um because i don't think i've ever failed this in my life uh, but yeah one last time this is a really really good showcase of how powerful u-turns can be even with a character that has really really bad turning with dingo dial you can just kind of do that and make it look kind of and it easy but yeah all right that is the final normal level done we have the final boss that is going to be hilarious and uh i, I will call time when it happens obviously again th this is not to your normal ending uh to a 101 run but this route is very very interesting so we'll see how this goes we're going to get a final boss cut scene, but in hindsight is really funny. And you've gathered all my time, Relics. I'm impressed. Well, it's about time I taught you a real lesson in speed. This race is for keeps. Yeah, okay, bud. So he's done all that smack talk, right? He's talked, he's talked his big game. And then he hasn't even showed up to the race. Where is my mans? All right, time is coming up. So get ready on it. It's going to be as soon as I hit myself with the third potion. That's one. That's two. Time. <laughs> what, what a great way to end a racing game, huh? <laughs> yeah, what an interesting like last 20 minutes we, we've had here. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly something. Um, but yeah, GG's all around. Um... Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I have no idea what time that was. I believe I was subestimate. I'd like to imagine. Yeah, oh was. yeah. That was a 2.15.49 according to our uh, on-screen timer. That's not bad. C considering I did the safe route, I think if I had 
persevered with the gems, I, I think maybe it could have been like a 211, 210. Because that safe route loses about three, four minutes. But mm. it is a very, very interesting thing to uh, to show off, I suppose. So, yeah. yeah, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, any any crash specific shout outs you want to do before you uh, start setting up for your next run? Um, yeah. So shout out to the um, CTR PC port community. Um, there are a bunch of uh, really, really talented people who are remaking this game from the ground up for PC. And when it does release, hopefully in the next couple of years, we'll be able to make custom tracks, custom characters, custom content for this game and um, have fully HD tracks, everything you could possibly imagine. So shout outs to those guys. They're, they're really doing God's work. It's, it's incredible what they're doing. Um, and yeah, shout outs to all the people who run this game. If you do want to run this game, uh, I'd recommend checking out the, the speedrun.com leaderboard. There you can find a link to the Crash Discord. Um, there are plenty of people that will be more than happy to help you out. And um, yeah, I, I do believe that's about it. I believe we got uh, we got Mario Kart 8 coming up, right? Oh, we sure do. I, yes, I, I hope we do. I yes, think sir. you're supposed to be running it, so... <laughs> yeah, so, yeah it'd, it'd be nice if I knew that. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, as Hypnoshark mentioned, first of all, uh, make, again, make sure you're following Hypnoshark, twitch.tv slash Hypnoshark. does more than just crash speedruns. There's a bunch of other stuff, too. Definitely check it out. Um, we're going to go into that Mario Kart speedrun. I, I also need to mention, too, that we're not ending with just Hypnoshark running Mario Kart today. Um, we're actually going to be going a little bit longer. We're going to be doing a rerun of the Best of 2023 Day 3. You saw that recently. Uh, we're going to rerun that after Hypnoshark's done here. Uh, just so if you want to stick around, hang out with people, watch some speedrunning content into your new year if you're uh, in a time zone where it hasn't happened yet, then you can definitely feel free to do so. So um, just wanted to let everybody know about that. And uh, we're going to go set up that Mario Kart run, so stick around. <laughs> 